just you know five or six years ago. Um, I think the balance possibly was uh, a little off when when dealing with recreational opportunities and conservation. We saw turtle nesting not increasing. Um, and so within the last five or six years, we're trying to find that balance, um, possibly doing a little bit more protection of certain habitats, and, uh, but also providing for recreational opportunities. The whole Atlantic population of loggerheads and, and green sea turtles are on the rise. Um, it's not just Cape Hatteras that's seen an increase. And, you know, it could also possibly go back to um, back in the late 80s, early 90s, uh, when there were laws uh, to have turtle exclusion devices on fishing nets and things like that. So, you know, it's really hard to contribute the, an increase in numbers, as I said before, in just like such a short period of time. You got to look at the whole scope, and um, especially with sea turtles. They take 30 years to mature. So if you're looking at possibly protection measures done in the 80s and the 90s to help hatchlings, to help nesting, well, that time, 30 years, it's coming around, you know, and we might be seeing an increase because of that. I guess the thing I would love to reiterate would be the protection of the habitat and keep everything as natural as we can, can, can do no harm for these animals. How much influence? Is it? We don't know yet. I don't think we're going to know for, for a little while. But again, I mean, keeping things as natural as possible, that's what the Park Service is about. Um, we're here to monitor, um, we're here to uh, collect data, and we're here to use that data to try to find that balance. Again, going back to the balance, trying to find that balance between the conservation efforts um, and protection of these species and the recreational opportunities that we provide here. So now the National Park Service has taken us out to a sea turtle nest and they're excavating the nest to see if there's any stragglers still in it. And the reason they do this is to give these guys a chance so they can be re-released into the wild and they can contribute to the breeding population of the sea turtles in the Atlantic Ocean. We have a depression here. The turtles inside, when we see a depression, they have come out of their egg shell. And uh, as they move around in the nest chamber, uh, the sand on top filters down through. Then they'll come out. Um, sometimes they all come out at once. We call that a boil. Um, other times, it'll take three, four days for them to all come out. Um, this one did pretty well. It was a semi-boil. It was uh, about 45 or 50, I believe, came out that first night. and. Uh, the subsequent nights we had, you know, just a couple here, a couple there. And uh, so, not sure what we're gonna find. Uh, definitely we'll find eggshells. Um, and we might find some live hatchlings. We might find some that uh, didn't quite make it. So we're just doing an inventory uh, of this nest and we do it for every single nest. Um, gives us hatch success, emergent success. Uh, basically just good data. So this is a loggerhead nest and that's what we tend to get here. Uh, about 90 to 95 percent of our nests are loggerhead. Uh, the remaining nests we get are green sea turtles. And, uh, we'll occasionally get a leatherback, um, but they are pretty, pretty rare up this far north. Now I'm starting to get to the eggshells here. A uh, typical nest on average will have about 110 eggs in them. This is, this is about an average nest of depth. It's a little bit deep for a loggerhead, it seems. Um, but, you know, 25, 30 centimeters down the ground. Yeah. So, yeah, this guy was pretty, pretty far down. Um, sometimes we'll get stragglers like this. You know, it helps out a lot when they all come out at the same time or they're all moving at the same time. Also, it helps survivability, uh, especially when you have, like, let's say this guy came out tonight, one lone turtle trying to make it through. Um, it's kind of like, you know, if you have 80 or 100 of them, the predator is going to pick off a few, but, you know, the individual has a little bit better, ch better chance. 
definitely in good shape. You know, sometimes they just, uh, guys down at the bottom have a little bit rough time. This is a transponder ball. They use them a lot of times to put over power lines and stuff, so you don't dig into them, yeah. uh, or sewage lines and stuff. But here we use them, uh, we put them in front of the nest, and let's say a large high tide comes or a storm surge, and it wipes out all of our markers, like you know the overwash marker and all the signs or anything. This allows us to bring out what is basically a metal detector, uh, a transponder ball locator, and we'll just sweep it and it'll make a beeping noise, and then we know where the nest is, and we can relocate it if we, if all the other fail safes fail. So, what I'm do with the unhatched, I'm basically, going to rip them open uh, and determine um, their level of development. Um, you know, sometimes they're not going to be developed at all. We're not going to see an embryo in there. This guy's completely underdeveloped. Um, looks fairly well and sometimes we'll find these we'll, we'll open them up and they'll still be they'll still be technically living or uh, but just you can see how much smaller it is and when you lay 110 eggs you're gonna have these abnormalities you're gonna have these deformities so he is uh, a little bit bigger than the yolk we're gonna call that late stage so we got uh, two undeveloped two late so far and everything we pull out of this nest is going right back into the ground. Um, all of this, uh, this material, it's, it's great. I mean, it's, it's nutrients for all the invertebrates, all the vertebrates that uh, live in the sand. All right, so we had 125 hatch um, and 123 made it out that so that's where the emergent success comes in um, so we still have the two hatchlings in here all right so this is a great example of how the national park service works with conservation to protect the species all along the coast especially sea turtles out of the 125 eggs that were laid 123 of them actually hatched and made their way to the ocean um, but out of that group a low amount will actually reach adulthood but thanks to the conservation efforts of these guys it'll be a higher number than what would have been if these guys were left alone to be on the beach by themselves. So good stuff and a lot of hard work from everybody involved.